What's up everybody, Max Maxworks here and we're back working on the golf cart. Um, so this episode is going to be basically me fixing all the things that have broken in the last six months that I've let this sit. Um, one of those downsides of having projects that you kind of put on the back burner is I've never had something fix itself or get better from sitting around and doing nothing. But I got the ATV out in the driveway, I got the golf cart in the garage. Um, and I have a game plan. Uh, this project was sitting for a while because uh, I had just a bunch of other stuff going on. And, you know, life threw me kind of a curveball, so I got a little bit more time on my hands now. And so this is a cheap project, and, and we're going to just keep, uh, keep right on plugging at it. And the plan is to try to use as many old junk parts, you know, fab stuff up uh, as I can um, to kind of keep the cost down. I did have to order a few parts, things like a, a brake rotor. Um, it would just been too much work to try to fabricate something and it would have been balanced. So I went ahead and ordered one of those. Um, ordered an air filter, just a little pod filter because I didn't have one that fit the right size. But I did remove this. This is the rear brake system off of the ATV and we're going to use it. I ordered some new pads. I ordered some new pads because the pads are pretty much garbage on this thing and everything's rusted uh, up. But the master cylinder itself works just fine uh, and the caliper works fine. So we're actually going to mount that underneath. Uh, there's actually a spot once we remove the factory brake drum cables where uh, you can actually the master cylinder with the brake pedal exactly where it is. The other thing is I gotta start thinking about getting the exhaust back on it, getting the intake back on it. And first thing we're gonna do actually right now is rebuild the carburetor again because I let it sit and end up sitting in a bucket, a bucket that got rained on so it's basically all gummed up again so it's actually in worse shape than when we got it but we're gonna remedy that uh first so let's get to it there's our first casualty carburetor has a uh, <clears throat> the accelerator pump and it was just seized in there and then it snapped on me when i tried to take it out the cool thing is though i got a new carburetor off of ebay not a rebuild a brand new one for $60. So hopefully that's legit. Um, and then we can just throw this carburetor in the garbage or set it aside for future projects. So the next thing we're working on, because I'm waiting on parts for other stuff, is the exhaust. And we're going to have to pass it through the floor. Obviously, we're going to have to chop up this FMF exhaust. But ideally, I wanted to exit through here, go down through this hole in the floor, hopefully, not interfere with the shifter, the brakes or anything, and then come out and exit down here and exit basically right in front of the tire. Um, I'm going to use as much of the header and as much of the muffler as I can, but ideally I would like it to be quiet and I would like it to um, not get in the way of anything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the plasma cutter here and we're going to cut out this uh, trapezoid and then we're going to chop this exhaust and figure out how we're going to route it. But like I said, ideally I want it routed under here and over here into this dead space right here. So here are the first couple of pieces. And basically the path we're gonna take is this guy mounts up as such, and this guy mounts up as such basically. And we're gonna run the exhaust back through here somewhere. Well, there's our exhaust header. The sad thing is I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit that full size muffler underneath. There's just, there's just no space for it. Um, but this is going to work for now, and so we're just going to run an open exhaust with this tiny little muffler thing for now. Uh, and then eventually I'll weld on a, uh, a small, like, rattle can type muffler or something on the end of it. So the next thing we got built right here is a little heat shield. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but the shifter is going to be immediately in front of this, so I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. Um, and I'm probably going to end up forming this piece of aluminum here a little bit more later on, but i got to pull the exhaust... Uh, to paint it <clears throat> and wrap it here in a minute anyway, so I didn't want to get too far into this. But what I did was I inserted rib, uh, rib nuts into the floor here. So this whole central piece can bolt in and out. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take that thing out of here and uh, get the exhaust off and paint it. But uh, I just wanted to show you guys how I made that. And all I did was I made a little template and this is just riveted together right here, these two pieces of material. Um, and this is just made out of like scrap aluminum sheet I had laying around. All right, we stripped down this uh, header and now I'm gonna spray it down with high heat paint and then once it's dry, we can wrap it with header wrap, help deal with vibration and contact. 
There's our uh, <clears throat> fully wrapped header. Basically just secured with two worm gear clamps, one on each end. It's nice and tight, still a little wet. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going ahead and leave this out in the sun uh, for a few hours and let it, um, let it dry out a little bit naturally. And then we'll bolt it all up for one last time. Uh, and it should help minimize any sort of vibrations. And it does cut down on noise quite a bit. Uh, so hopefully all of this will help uh, quiet this thing down a little bit. Um, then we can reinstall our cover as well. And then the exhaust side of things is basically done. So the next thing we're going to work on <clears throat> is getting the brake master cylinder mounted. And so here's this cool little bracket I made out of a piece of scrap aluminum. Uh, it's threaded and tapped. So basically this is going to mount to here. And if I take you guys underneath. So when you hit the brake, what happens is this actually pushes forward like that. That's uh, the braking gauge, and it's got this uh, cool little ratcheting um, auto lock. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to remove this bar, and we're going to drill it, and this clevis right here, which is the original clevis, um, will mount basically on a hole through right there, so the clevis will mount like this. Oops, let me rearrange my hands here. Basically the clevis will mount like that, and now we just need to build a mount. <clears throat> for uh, the master cylinder itself. So, full confession time. Aluminum TIG welding, not really my thing. Um, but I did manage to make this pretty trick bracket. As you can see, I ground down all of my shitty welds. Um, but, it still works. So this is gonna be our bracket. I don't still don't know how I'm gonna mount this to the chassis yet, but at least we have something to mount our master cylinder on. So, back underneath this thing, and basically, this is going to sit kind of like that. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to bolt this up. I'm going to drill some holes in here and basically just bolt this up. And that will hold our master cylinder in place. And it actually butts up against this piece, so there really shouldn't be any deflection in that axis when you hit the brake pedal. So... But before we can do that, we need to unbolt the rest of these bolts and pull this part off because we still got to drill this for the, uh, the clevis. So we'll just swing it down and then just drill it through down here. Alright, let's check this out. We got our mount in here. Master cylinder is mounted up to the stock brake lever. We got our hose running up here and way up there I mounted the reservoir. I ordered a custom stainless steel line uh, from China for like $14. That's supposedly going to be the right length um, to run back to where our caliper is going to be. Um, I haven't mounted the caliper yet, but uh, it's exciting. At least half the braking system is in, and if I can reach up here, I mean, you get full actuation of the master cylinder, and if I push it and then hit the handbrake, it'll actually hold. Now, I don't know if this will actually bleed off pressure over time, so I don't know if it'll actually work as a handbrake or not. Um, but, or as a parking brake, rather. But, for now, I'm super excited. It's awesome to uh, have another one of the main systems in and on the golf cart. Alright guys, that wraps up another episode of our golf cart build. Um, I'm excited. Brakes are on it. It's really starting to come together. Um, basically, I got our big checklist right here and we're going to go through it step by step. I got a bunch of parts ordered um, that are kind of coming in today, tomorrow, this weekend. Uh, and so all of that's going to be in the next episode. But moving right along. Um, I do apologize. Uh, 
there is a bit of a jump between the third episode and this episode. Uh, some of the files basically just got lost on my computer over time, uh, and so they weren't they didn't make it into one of these recorded videos. But I'm excited where this is going. Uh, if you like the channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, leave me a comment if any of you guys have ever done something like this or you see something that I'm doing wrong or, or just wanna give me a shout out, whatever. I always read all my comments. I do my best to respond to all of them. Anyway, this is Max Works. I'm Max. Peace.